I love video games. They were a huge part of my childhood. I would spend hours drinking up the wonderful elixir of entertainment that they offered. So why did I stop playing them? To answer that question, I'll need to walk you through the various stages of technology that I went through. Hello there friends, welcome back to the channel where we focus on self-improvement, productivity, and making the best possible versions of ourselves. Now I could have done a whole ton of nerdy awesome research and found all kinds of terrible, probably totally made up facts about how gaming does awful things to your brain, put them on a dump truck and then dumped them all on you in spectacular fashion. But who would want that? Aside from needing to resuscitate some of your brain cells, that kind of video would be quite unfair for me to make as I'm in no position to speak for anyone else on this subject other than myself and my own experiences. So let's get started. Like most young children who think that they're more mature than they actually are, I was eager, no, desperate to get every ounce of enjoyment out of life that I possibly could. You see, my personality is an Enneagram 4, which translation means that I don't like to have just you know normal feelings like most people. I want giant, enormous waves of dopamine rushing through my brain. So naturally, when I was introduced to video games on our world-class Windows 98 computer, which you could practically count the pixels on, I was instantly hooked. My entire motivation and energy went into <laughs> playing that as much as humanly possible and learning everything about these video games. I was pretty sneaky too. I'd finish eating lunch and I'd be like, hey, I'm gonna go out and play. I'd swagger out the front door, then promptly run around to the basement where the computer was. Another afternoon spent entirely staring at pixels going back and forth. Epic. And then just when I thought it couldn't get any better, my parents let me get an Android tablet. Feast your eyes on the wonderful and remarkably effective time waster, the Nexus 7. This changed everything. For the first time, I could take my games with me. I mean, that's incredible. Imagine trying to carry a Windows 98 computer around. I mean, that thing takes like seven minutes just to boot up. Not only that, I can now communicate with other gamers on these games. This was the first time that I had ever communicated with anyone on the internet, and I learned a lot of things that I still wish I didn't know. The majority of the games that I played were online-based games, so they would continue to run after I quit playing them. Uh, these are things like Clash of Clans or Boom Beach. I was absolutely obsessed with these games. Like, I remember being so excited just to wake up in the morning because then I could check on my games. And then as time went on, these games went from my tablet to my phone, which was a serious disaster for my productive self. Why would I read my book when I could destroy Death Vader 1997? A question I thought had a very clear and logical answer. And then as I got older, something really, really interesting happened. That exhilarating high that I would get from playing these games didn't last nearly as long. In fact, it was beginning to taper off and actually go down. The games simply didn't bring as much enjoyment. I didn't stop them, obviously, because I'd been living in that world for so long that that's what I was comfortable with. It was just easier to stay there. And then something really dramatic happened. The unthinkable. I was no longer allowed to play them. The reason for this was because I went to a Bible college that didn't allow any form of gaming whatsoever. I mean, the audacity of these people. That was, that, that was sarcasm, by the way. Now that my brain could function a little bit closer to normal and a little less like an addict, I came to a terrible realization. I had an IgM living in my brain. Oh, IgM stands for Instant Gratification Monkey. This little guy is amazing at procrastination. Here's how he does it. Right when I'm feeling extra motivated and very inspired to do something productive, this little guy swings in and it's like, actually, Let's spend the next three hours scouring the internet again to see if there's any way to get free gems on Clash of Clans. And then let's eat some ice cream and go to bed. When I was a kid, I was never taught to hold this little guy back. He controlled my life. For a kid, it's a no-brainer. Have fun or don't have quite as much fun. Easy choice. When I actually wasn't allowed to play video games, I suddenly realized that I was unbelievably dependent on that form of instant gratification. Games were how I coped with parts of life I didn't like. Kind of like drinking Mountain Dew every day and taking ibuprofen because your teeth hurt. I also realized that this instant gratification monkey did not have my best interest in mind. I justified my actions by telling myself that this is how I unwind or how I de-stress. But in reality, it was a big giant circle. I played video games, which caused me to neglect parts of my life, which caused stressful situations, which got me back into playing video games. I think what scared me the most was how automatic and instant it was. 
it was automatic because I would do it without even thinking. I mean, there'd be times when I would just like find myself with my phone in my hand, with the app open, already playing the game, and I didn't even remember pulling out my phone. It was instant because it was always at my fingertips. I could always turn to it no matter when or where I was. That accessibility was so misused when I was a child that <laughs> I found it really hard to control myself as an adult, which is really scary when you have an adult who still can't control themselves. So I stopped, gave it all up just like that. And so far I haven't gone back. You should be able to see why, right? I mean, it should be fairly obvious. Like I was like, I hate giving in to the instant gratification monkey because it was taking my control away of, of life. I pretty much didn't learn self-control or self-discipline or the delay of gratification until like way later in my teen years. I didn't know how to solve problems, especially in relationships, because in conflict, I would just run away to my little world. I never realized how much of a crutch I was standing on until it was kicked out from underneath me. And I can honestly say that was the best fall I ever had. Giving up video games was a minuscule price to pay compared to learning how to respond properly to strong emotions like anger or resentment, disappointment, or just the simple fact of learning how to build healthy relationships and how to starve that instant gratification monkey. Like those things are so unbelievably important to learn, especially at a young age. And playing games and having that at my fingertips pretty much took that away or, or made that process way longer.